Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is actually going to be something that I've never done on this channel, a little series I'm gonna call Facts to Film. But today we're gonna to talk about one of the most notorious killers who has actually inspired lots of horror movies, Ed Gein. Ed Gein was born August 27th in 1906 in Plainfield, Wisconsin, and is rightfully named the Butcher of Plainfield. Ed lived with his brother Henry and mother Augusta in a little farm in Wisconsin. To the community around them, the Geins were a very unassuming family. Ed and Henry, um, would help on the farm and then also do small odd jobs just to kind of make ends meet. When Ed and Henry were a little bit older, I think like late 20s, early 30s, they were doing a controlled burn on their farm um, to kind of clear some bush out of the way to make a little bit of extra space for land. And um, during that fire, it did get out of hand. And when everything was said and done, Henry wound up dead. The death was officially ruled to be part of the fire, but apparently enough suspicious evidence was pulled up that people started suspecting Ed might have had something to do with it. Ed and Henry's mother was very overprotective of them, and some people think maybe Ed wanted to get rid of Henry out of jealousy to just to be the only person his mother focuses on. Um, no one really came to a conclusion or actually accused Ed of killing Henry, but enough people in the neighborhood thought the circumstances of Henry's death were suspicious enough to think something may not be right with Ed. A few months after Henry's death, his mother did pass away, and this was kind of the turning point for Ed. It wasn't until 12 years later in 1957 that the real horrors of what was happening at Ed Gein's house came to light. On November 16th in 1957, Bernice Warden went missing. She owned a small shop in town and the last person to enter her store before she went missing was actually Ed Gein. Warden's son was actually a police officer at the time and was the one to report her missing after a few hours. Once they discovered that Ed was the last person to enter the store, they went to his house and what they found was a true nightmare. In one of the sheds at Ed's house, they found Bernice Warden's body hanging upside down from a meat hook. Her head was missing and she was completely gutted. But this was only the tip of the horror iceberg. Once discovering her body, they started to search the property in the house and found countless dead body parts and different things made from humans. Now, Ed actually only pled guilty to killing two women, Bernice Warden, who was the one that ended up getting him caught, and Mary Hogan. He admitted to killing Mary back in 1954, and when asked about all the other body parts found in his house, said that he actually just went to graveyards and dug up body parts of women. Now, there were body parts found of at least 10 different women, and there were some missing women at the time, so people do believe that Ed might actually be lying about the amount of people he killed, but he was only ever convicted of two murders. Among all the um, body parts that they found, they also did find Ed Gein's mother's body. Um, quite specifically, they did find her face and it was kind of formed in the shape of a mask. And when asked about this, Ed Gein said he quite literally wanted to crawl back into his mother's skin. And this became very evident whenever they started to find clothing made from women's skin. The more they started to search Ed Gein's house, the more they started to find refurbished things made out of human body parts. Let me just read to you some of the disgusting things they ended up finding in his house. Curtain pools made from lips. Lampshades made out of human skin. Chair upholstery made from human skin. Bowls, tableware, and ashtrays made from skulls and various bones. Masks made out of people's faces. A belt made from nipples. A wastebasket of skin. A collection of noses and a box of salted dried vulvas. Leggings made out of female leg skin, uh, most specifically thighs. A torso vest comprised of multiple women's body parts. A dress of skin. And then um, accessories like hats and gloves of skin. And while it was never proven that Ed was actually a cannibal, it is highly suspected that he might have actually consumed some of these victims. And when asked about necrophilia, Ed said, no, I did not have sex with any of the dead bodies. I don't like the way they smell. The house was completely in shambles. Um, it was disgusting inside. It was dirty. It was cluttered. It looked like um, he hadn't cleaned the house in years. His mother being dead by tw at 12 years at that point, it looked like he stopped taking care of the house the day she died. The only room that was actually in pristine condition was Ed's mother's room, which he kept looking exactly how it did when she passed away. He was arrested in 1957 and pleaded insanity, getting sent to a mental institution. The case was reopened and he was sent to court once he was deemed fit for trial, and that's where he was convicted of the two murders of Mary Hogan and Bernice Warden. Ed did live out the rest of his life in a mental institution and died at age age 77 due to cancer. This is one of the first times we'd ever seen a case like this in the United States, so it shocked the nation. The events were horrific and showed a new sign of human nature not really seen before, and this sparked a huge spike in horror movies inspired by Ed. One of the first movies inspired by Ed Gein was Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho in 1960. Now this movie is actually based on a book by Robert Block. 
and Robert Block lived about 35 miles away from Ed Gein's house. After reading bits and pieces of the story, Robert got the idea for Norman Bates, a crazed killer who keeps his mother's dead body in the basement, dresses as her, and commits murders of women. Robert actually said he didn't realize how close Norman Bates was to Ed Gein until seeing the entire story. Um, he didn't realize that Ed actually did keep his mother's dead body that had not been reported at the time that Robert wrote the story. But this was made into a huge movie, which is now one of the most um, critically acclaimed horror movies of all time, and was originally inspired by Ed Gein. Another huge movie inspired by this that actually states the beginning inspired by true events is Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974. The only difference with this movie is they don't necessarily focus on the people versus the actions of Ed Gein. As you know, the um, house that Leatherface lives in is completely decorated with human body part furniture, and Leatherface himself wears a mask made out of human skin. So Texas Chainsaw Massacre, while not necessarily about the story of Ed, definitely amplifies the horrific things that he did. Another more literal interpretation of Ed Gein is Three on a Meat Hook in 1972. As the name suggests, it's about a killer who hangs his victims on meat hooks. And as you remember, that's how they found Patrice Warden's body hanging upside down, headless, and gutted on a meat hook. And although it's never been proven that Ed practiced cannibalism, it is highly suspected. The movie Deranged came out in 1974, and it's one of the movies that's actually closest to Ed Gein's story. It's about a farmer whose mother dies, and and in order to keep her company, he starts robbing graves to find body parts and eventually leads him to killing women. And another movie inspired by Ed Gein is Silence of the Lambs in 1991. Although this movie is a little bit different as it's not only inspired by Ed Gein, but also a couple other serial killers. Ted Bundy, Gary Heidnick, and Ed Kemper. Now the obvious part for Ed Gein is the um, women's suit that Buffalo Bill is creating to become a full woman. But the way he lures his victims in by acting injured and getting them to help him load something into his car is actually a popular MO used by Ted Bundy. And while in prison, Ted Bundy actually helped in um, catching the Green River Killer by helping the cops see into the mind of someone who is deranged. And of course, you know, they go to Hannibal Lecter to try to hunt down the infamous Buffalo Bill. And just how Buffalo Bill keeps his victims in the well in the basement, Gary Heidnick would do the same thing, keeping them there for multiple days before murdering them. And what's kind of glossed over in the movie is the fact that Buffalo Bill did start out killing his grandparents and actually is living in their house and had kind of converted the basement to this place where he can create his women's suit, which is exactly how Ed Kemper had started his killing spree by killing off his grandparents. There are tons of other movies that say they are inspired by Ed Gein, mainly because any movie that includes um, women dying, people getting skinned, or anything made out of human body parts always goes back to Ed Gein. Like I said, this was one of the first times we saw something this horrific in the United States and it made headlines across the nation. People couldn't believe the horrible, disgusting things found inside this seemingly ordinary man's house. And while I don't condone what Ed did, and it is truly horrible that another human being could treat other humans like this, it did give us some of the best horror movies of our time. But I hope you guys like this kind of new segment I'm wanting to do from fact to film. Let me know if there's any other topics you want to cover of people or events that happened that later on inspired um, horror movies. I love learning about movies that were inspired by true events, even if those events were horrific. I think it does make the movie a little more interesting and real. You can leave a comment down below or head over to my Instagram, What a Horror. I'll be making a post about this video as well. I thank you so much for watching this video. Go ahead and give it a like. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. I put out new videos every Friday. And until next time, stay spooky.